Thank you. All right, they call me Joachim III of Sweden. Uh, I'm going to try to teach you now a short way to create an organization of amateurs. Sounds good? What's the meaning of the word? The Italians know. Amare. In English, per favore. Love. Love. Yeah. It's a person that loves. Loves what she or he does. So that's what I'll try to teach you, how to create amateurs of your colleagues. Improvement amateurs. Uh, after school, I, uh, I studied in Italy. And after school, I came back to Sweden and I got a job at a, a small IT company on the verge of a crisis. So the customers were dissatisfied, the employees, they were disengaged, and the owners and the managers, they tried to force people into improving. And then I came in. And I found the situation really, really hard, as you can imagine. This was my first job. And to make matters worse, my pain in the ass boss, he was a true orienteering f uh, fanatic. You, I think most of you know of orienteering. If you're from Sweden, you definitely do. Uh, my boss actually had one of these in his office. Do you know orienteering? You run around in the forest, uh, there's these checkpoints, you have a compass as a, and a map, and you're supposed to check these off as fast as possible. That's the whole idea. And I thought it was difficult as it was, but my manager, he insisted that we had some kind of orienteering theme on the improvement initiative we were, gonna, uh, we were going to launch. Uh, and I thought, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't like it, and he wouldn't talk about anything else in orienteering. He was out with a wife on the weekend having competition. The children had trainings in, during the weeks, and I just hated it. Do you like it, by the way, orienteering? I, you, you, no, you, you don't dare to say anything else. But I've started to like it, actually, because I realized when you're out there in the forest, you ask yourself three questions all the time, repeatedly. So let's imagine. You, you don't have to have done this to realize this. If you have your map, your compass, you're out running in the forest, what's the first question you ask yourself that you need to know? Where I, should go. I, where I am. I'd start there. Where am I? Well, I'm here on the trail by the steep cliff. All right, I'm here. And the next question, where should I go? Should I, go? I need to know where to go. And the third question, how far, how far is it? How do I get there? Right? That's all you need to ask yourself. It took me some time to realize. It actually took a meeting with Jeffrey Liker, you know who he is, uh, to realize. Because when I met him, I asked him, I mean, this was at the time when I just started at the I IT company. And I was really frustrated. We couldn't get started. So uh, I thought about asking for some ad advice on how to get started. But actually, uh, that wasn't the question that came out. I said, well, we can't get started. We can't. We can't even agree on what an improvement is. And that was good that I ca came out because he started explaining. He said, well, at Toyota, they say an improvement, that's a solved problem. That's nice, right? Somebody see a problem, we solve it. Perfect. But he added, a problem at Toyota is the gap between where you are today and where you want to be. That became even better. He told me, if you don't know where you are, you can't make improvements. If you don't know where you're going to get, you can't make improvements. So after meeting Jeffrey Leike, we could go back, my manager and me, and agree, OK, we need to make every employee in this company into an orienteering fanatic. So we decided to have trainings. We had training sessions with all the departments at the IT company. We had sales support, the salesmen. We had. Uh, uh, responsible for the server walls, everybody. We took trainings uh, with each group. And I'd like to take you back to that time to join me for the training. But uh, I need you, Sabina, right? Stephanie. Stephanie, sorry. Close. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need you to just sit there. If you could just raise your hand towards the ceiling, like this. Perfect. S sit like that. Because now we need somebody to volunteer. Ah, Stephanie, thank you for volunteering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know it's a bad joke, but uh, uh, do you have a phone with a watch, right? I have an assignment for you. I've gotten a job from my manager. You're going to tie me. 
So I need you to take time for the whole job. The rest of you, you have a more difficult assignment. You're going to try to figure out what my job is, what assignment my manager gave me, all right? So are you ready with the watch? Are you with me now, all right? You know your assignment, right? Great. This is my workstation. I'm going to start here. And when you tell me to start, I'll start. And then when I'm finished, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm done. How fast was it? 21, that's really, really good. That's personal record, I think. 21 seconds it took me to do this assignment. What do you think my assignment was? More specifically, you're, you're definitely right. W w what did I do, actually? I thought this was going to be hard. I, I lied. It's quite simple. What, what did I do? Thank you. I wrote value. That was my assignment. I wrote value on the pad. It took me 21 seconds. That's really, really good. I've never done it that fast before. But I've heard that when you have people with different perspectives from the outside, you might get help on how to improve, how to make things even better. So if you could give me just some advice, what could I do to make it go even faster? What could I do? I, that's a good idea. Do you agree, everyone? Why not? Sorry? Interesting idea. I've never thought about this before. Thank you. I bring, I'll bring this near, closer to me. What can I do more? Sorry? Oh, yeah, you're right. I had to look for the pen. Yeah, that's stupid. I could write sitting down. Why not? Let's sit down. What can we do more? Abbreviation, that's interesting. Uh, do you have one? V. All right. Let's do it. Are you done? Can you time me again? Okay. Uh, anything else? You can use a symbol that has a deeper meaning. <laughs> what could that be, please? A heart. A heart. Let's go with a heart. Okay. Can you time me again? Here we go. How, how fast was it? Two seconds. Two se that's amazing. I mean, from, from 21 seconds to two seconds in this short time. Uh, I'm amazed how we could achieve that by just discussing together. But we had a suggestion, write even faster, but you didn't agree. Why didn't you agree? I'm curious. I mean, that's the advice I always get. Write faster. That's what people tell me all the time. Write faster. But you disagreed. Why? Please, let me know. Because of the quality. What happens if I write too fast and the quality goes bad? I have to correct it, right? It would take even more time. What was, all the, what was the other reasons for these other suggestions that you saw? I was looking for the pen. I was walking here. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the fr that was a fraction. The, you saw the big potential somewhere else, right? So by just doing this very, very simple exercise, we realized that we need to focus on where the potential lies. So we introduced one word, one word. Now I need the pens, for real. Uh, I know that you, you could use different wor words for this. We said hassle. Focus on the hassle. What hassles you? What makes your work harder? But I just realized now, uh, some of you have already suspected that this is actually not my real work, and you're right. But if we, if we continue uh, just uh, imagining this is my work, I just realized somebody, something went wrong here. What could have went wrong? You can think of anything. What could have went wrong? We need some more ink, definitely. What more could have gone wrong? Yes, thank you. Why do you think of that? Uh, anyway, I think it's a good, uh, it should probably be red, right? 
I also realized that when I sat down, it should be here, I just found out that that's right. Who decided what's right? Sorry? Who decides? Thank you, you all know this, right? The customer decides. So this is what my customer wants, a red heart placed there. But actually, I just realized that it's going to be quite tough for me to sit like this to, if I want to ride it up there. What could we do? I know this is complicated, I know, but anyway. Yeah, I could stand up or, as you said, you could lower the flip chart, right? Do you think it's hard, this, with continuous improvement? Is it complicated? I mean, this is what it all boils down to. If you want your colleagues to get two, two things, two things to focus on, it's what the customer needs, the internal or external, of course. You have many internal customers. You have some external customers. And how can they deliver that with minimum hassle for this themselves? If all your colleagues really got this, took, took it to heart, and started working like that, how, what would your processes look like? Quite all right, wouldn't they? So what we did at the IT company was we took it down to basics, two fo things to focus on. We had a training to create amateurs in 30 minutes, improvement amateurs, introducing two concepts, hassle and customer. And we talked about who's, who is the customer, of course, what does the customer want, do we have internal customers, etc. All right, thank you very much, that's enough. Great, excellent. Ah, uh, yeah. Was that all? Just one more. Ah, perfect. So what we did, uh, something about uh, bad food in the cafeteria. We know about that, right? That problem. It's too hot. Uh, tables are full of documents. Too many items. Uh, poor communication. We are distributed uh, geographically. So what you see what I do, right? When they, when they are on the same theme, I, I cluster them. And if they're not, I don't. We have uh, un cardboard boxes we don't use. Um, haven't got the time. That's a classic one, right? Uh, uh, if, if, if we needed some more, like bones on the fish, we just added that. Uh, the tables doesn't have the right rate right height, um, too much work, it's on the theme not having time. I'm not going to th go through all the notes, but what we do did when we had all the notes, we gave the bones a title. This is about time, we haven't got time. This is geography, this is communication, this is Unnecessary stuff. This is about the climate. Could maybe be interpreted in several ways. Uh, this is about the cafeteria. Okay, we knew that, okay. We have a lot of hassle. Hassle, this is one of them. And we have a lot of reasons why it's there. So we voted again. Three votes each. You could put it on different bones of the fish. Two on the same, if you like. Or all your votes on the same. Then we know, okay, that, this is where we can start. We have a decided on the common starting point. We want to start with unnecessary stuff. We have tables full of documents, so we are all right. What could we do about that? Yeah, that's complicated, right? What could we do about the documents on the tables? Any ideas? What could we do? We have unnecessary documents on the tables. Sorry? Yeah, what could we do concretely? Please help me. Burn them. Burn them, right. Sorry, what's your name? We Paul. Paul, yeah. We could bo burn them. So 
when we had done this, we had this huge cloud of unnecessary hassle. But when we had decided on where to work, we had framed the problem, we had used a fishbone to decide on where to start, we could create concrete to-do lists. Who does wh what and when? So we could start writing. Burn the documents. Paul, please help me with that. Until next week when we have the next meeting. So it's going to be the, I don't really know, 26th or something like that. We just continue reading the notes. There's something about uh, cardboard boxes. I can remove them until next meeting. And we continue like this. I have a question for you. When we did like this, I know all of you have to-do lists in your organizations. I know you do. When we did like this, what should be done by who and when should it be completed? Do you think when we met next week that these items were ticked off? Everybody did this part? You said no, I see you shaking your heads. I think it's so funny because that's exactly what I hear all the time. I can actually go into an organization and ask, okay, I see you have a to-do list here, but do, do you do it actually? People, no, we don't. Isn't it funny? But I, I'll tell you, th this was done. People did this. I think it's amazing. Why did people do this? What's the difference? Yeah, exactly, the process to get there. So what was the thing with the process? That's the whole difference, I'm sure. Because I've actually heard, of course, you, you would never do this in your organizations, but I've actually heard that sometimes a top manager would come and say, OK, you really need to improve. Here's a list of things. It's quite different from this process, I think. So what's the difference? The engagement. The engagement. So what was created here? Yeah, exactly. You made a commitment. So you own what's said here, right? You own it. You made a commitment. You, t you said it yourself. You took part. You voted. You wrote notes. You were a part of the process. You owned the whole process. And I think that, that's, that's the main thing. Then, you, of course, you have the peer pressure. I mean, Paul, he doesn't want to say, uh, come next week and say, OK, I said I w would remove these documents, but uh, I skipped that. Wouldn't be fun, right? So we, of course, the peer pressure, but ownership, I think that's key. So what we did in less than 30 minutes was to learn everybody in the company to constantly ask themselves three questions. Where are we? Or where am I? Where should I go? How do I get there? to focus on only two things. What does my customer need? And how should I deliver that with minimum hassle for myself? And then we had a guideline. Anybody could guess what the guideline was? It was really, really important for us to have something all the time. You could say we encouraged everybody to be amateurs. So what do you think our guideline was to have To have fun, to like what they do. And I'm sure keeping it simple like this, I mean, everybody could remember this. You di we didn't need more than 30 minutes to get everybody on board on this. Keeping it this simple made it possible to have fun together, I'm sure. So we created an organization of amateurs who loved what they do. And what's, what's good with amateurs? If you love what you do, what do you do? If you love what you do? You do it. Exactly. And if you have a hard time doing it, what do you do? You keep doing it, right? So amateurs will ask for your help when they have a hard time. It won't be you going to them telling that you can help them. And an amateur will find his way or her way and the tools needed when it's hard. 
you won't tell them which tools to use. They will find them. They will even ask you for your tools because they know you have a lot. And the best thing uh, about amateurs, you know what that is? They turn into something. They become eventually experts. Thank you. So that's what happens when you have an organization of amateurs. That's the first step in creating an organization of experts. So this is, keep it like this. That's my advice. And I hope I have given you a slightly new perspective or one new idea on how to create improvement amateurs in your organizations. What you pick from what I've said doesn't matter at all. But I hope you have one thing, one thing that will help you create amateurs of your colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your inspiring presentation. I have uh, a question with regard to the classic um, challenge of democratic system. Uh, if you go to the uh, previous page on your Flipboard. Sure. Uh, um, how do you deal with the problems of the minority? Because my problem, which was uh, the room is too hot, is not solved yet. Oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, that it was like that several times, that people didn't get their thing solved immediately. But what we, what we realized was that the process of taking part, maybe this is Swedish, I don't know, but we are really, really used to getting our voice heard. And to us, and I think this is general to everyone, it's often more important getting your voice heard than your will through. Might sound strange, but I think it's often the case. If you get your voice heard, you can let people know about your idea, you, you're listened to, then it's not as important to get your will through. But what we, what we said was, of course, when this is done, we'll move on to the next one in the fishbowl. So they, know, they knew that they, their problem would be solved eventually. And that was the reason, I think, why people came along anyway, even though their, their priority wasn't top of the list. Very interesting presentation. Enjoyed Thank it a lot. Thank you. Um, one question. What do you do if you have people that don't bring in any ideas? If you have a group of people which are a little bit, whatever, tired? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the classical answer to this question is don't focus on them. Uh, that's what we say all the time. Uh, focus on the 80% that wants this. And I think it's good, good advice in general, but sometimes that's not enough because sometimes you really have people, not problem people, but people with problems that make it hard for them to take part. In that case, you really need to coach them. Uh, and that's a different topic. But <coughs> so my answer to you, your question is, don't only go with the classical answer. Sometimes you really need to take your time to talk to them and help them s increase their self-awareness of what it is preventing them from taking part. And sometimes you have to increase your self-awareness of what prevents them from taking part because sometimes you are a part of the problem. Thanks uh, again for your presentation. Thank it you. It was definitely fun. Thank you for taking uh, part. First, I would like to address we really burned some documents <laughs> with some clients and they really had fun. So you're absolutely right. Uh, in the end, I was a little bit surprised. You said uh, we turn amateurs into experts, but doesn't that uh, get rid of the fun? Uh, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you prevent? Ah, time's up. Uh, time's up. I can't answer. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so. That's fun. Uh, uh, well, I, I know that there's, uh, but I think you can minute. actually continue loving what you do when you're an expert. But first step in becoming an expert is always becoming an amateur. You're never becoming an expert immediately. So, but I think you can keep loving what you do, still. Definitely. Uh, is the time up or do we, yeah. Yeah. Okay, quick question. Um, thanks for the 
Good presentation. I like the simplicity of it and the actionability of it. The one thing question I have, did you just not do it here because of the time? Because I wonder why you jumped to the solution of each individual item here. Uh, because what I would have done, I would have gone through a little bit more root causes yeah. behind it and then try to offer a solution. I found that you starting solving things pretty early. You're Was right. that just here? Uh, not, not really just here, but maybe this it was really quick, right? So, so, so we would have spent some more time on it. But we really had a discussion on, on preciseness and tempo during this. And we realized that if we're too precise, we won't, ne we won't do anything. So we decided, okay, let's be a bit less precise, but keep the tempo up. Because if we have high tempo and something goes wrong, we fix it. So... I agree with you, this was really fast, but I still think you really need to think about how m precise you need to be and how much you should focus on being quick. I mean, it's, it's maybe a trade-off, yeah? Thanks for your question. Yeah, I wanted to suggest something, what uh, the colleague here in front of me said. Yeah? Yeah. What, what do you do if you have frustrated people or they don't engage in this process? Yeah, um, I often say to companies, the biggest potential are frustrated people. Because if yeah. you take away what frustrates them, yeah, you can you can eliminate the biggest mood in, the, in yeah. the company. Yeah, great. And therefore, if they are frustrated, fine, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the best mood. That's yeah. a great pr perspective. And frustration is a lot of energy. Great. Uh, finish off. Th this is my name. Uh, if you want to read the whole story and some more, that's my new book coming out in a couple of months. Uh, my name, I, I'm on LinkedIn. Please uh, connect. And that's my email address. I just want to say, as a finishing remark, I found this, no, not that, but I found a picture. Many years after my time at the IT company, I found a picture looking like this in a book about lean, that you should always have a target, look at your outcome, the problem, solve the problems, prioritize the root causes, and then decide what should be done by who and when. And I just love it when practice works in theory. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.